Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixed Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. This is another project using my July Hobby Base kit, which was themed and titled Under the Sea. Um, and I have come up, well I haven't come up, this was one of the um, suggestions in the kit, which was this pop-up box card. I've made many of these before. This is the smallest I've done. This is really cute, very dinky. And I've used the, for the love of stamps, Under the Sea little critters there and I have pretty much coloured it like I did for last week's card because um, I really like that and I just think those colours work really well and I've just created a similar scene but obviously this time it's to go in this pop-up card I've got the anchor there which I haven't used before that was a stamp which I'll show you I've put a little eyelet through it and then just put a little baker's twine just to give you know a little something there and then this one's your fantastic and then you turn it around and on the back you can write your message these you can decorate as well if you want, but I had so much going on here I've just kind of kept these free. But I've heat and, um, I've uh, made my own paper using watercolour, so I've done a wash there which I'll show you. Put a little navy mat there just to kind of lift them off the white card base. And then I have used uh, the embossing folder that we received in the kit over that watercolour paper and you've also got it underneath there as well. Um, I've used the, this is the wow embossing powder salsa that we got again to create that treasure look and then I've just used this is from my own stash which are those succulent stamps that I've used in last week's card everything else was in the kit so let's crack on and make it so this one was a pre-made um, die uh, cut die so it was we just popped it out of the paper and then assembled it so I'm going to show you what that one looks like now Okay, so this is the pop-up box card that we received in the kit. So it's all ready to go, you just need to burnish all your score lines and pop it together. So I'm gonna make this one up and show you it ready, and then I'm gonna make it again, just to show you that you don't need to have this, you can still make them. I'm gonna do the same size everything. The only thing that will be different is it probably will not have this kind of fancy edge, because I'm, I'm gonna have a look, but I'm not sure I've got something that's gonna be the same so we will see but just wanted to show you that's how it comes and I'll share links to where you can get hold of these ones if you want to as well in my blog post so this is the stamp set we received it's the hunky dory for the love of stamps under the sea um, needs a good clean but um, all the stamps are ready to be cleaned after making this card that's the Dovecraft anchor so I just stamped that one fussy cut it and uh, you'll see all those because I've got them all ready okay so I've already prepared my back piece and all my cards and then I'm going to do the watercolour background and embossing with you. But this is what you need for your pop-up box card. And that's very similar as you would have seen to the kind of the pop-out piece that we've got. I just haven't done this fancy edge. So as you can see this is pretty similar to that pre-made one that I showed you just before. It's just this is all straight. So what you need to do is a piece of eight and a quarter by four and a half. Okay, along the eight and a quarter inch side, you want to score at two, four, six, and eight. And then you'll have this quarter inch tab. Flip the paper over so the quarter inch tab is at the top. And then you want to score at two and a quarter all the way down to the last score line. Okay, so don't go right to the bottom, just go to that last score line. And what that's going to do is give us our nice straight back here, because this piece isn't folded over. Now you also notice that I've cut a piece off the front here, because a lot of the box cards, and I've made them like that, you keep that also, you keep that piece down at the front. But it just, when I was kind of playing around, it wasn't really working with what I wanted to do, so I've chopped it off, and I still think it looks really nice. And also, I forgot to say, that's how they all fold flat. Fold completely flat, so you can pop them in an envelope and post them. So. Yeah, really, really fun. Okay, so that's your scoring. Now the reason we flipped it over is because you're gonna be folding the box around one way and then you're gonna be bringing your kind of side panels and folding them out another way. So it's just, it will stop your um, score lines cracking. Then you need these three pieces which are gonna be our little tabs inside to hold our little um, critters on. So they're all attached by acetate. So this is two and a half by three quarters of an inch and you'll need three of them. You may only want two, you may want more. It's entirely up to you. Once you see me put it together, then you'll be able to determine whether you want to change it or not. So on these pieces, along the longest length, you just want to score at a quarter of an inch and two and a quarter. And just do that on all three, okay? And then what you can do is just burnish over all those little tabs. And that's what we're gonna pop our tape to and they're gonna stick inside our pop-up box. 
Then to decorate the back, my mat on the back is one and seven eighths of an inch by four and three eighths of an inch. And then the white piece on top is two, uh, one and three quarters by four and five eighths, no four and one eighth of an inch, sorry. So I've just dropped it down by one eighth of an inch just to give a small little border, just so it lifts it against that white background there, okay? Just looks a bit lost otherwise. So get that ready, and then what you want to do is burnish your two, four, six, and eight, okay? They should face up, and then your score line that went this way, when you're looking at it, it should have a lump. It should be like a little bridge, okay? You should be able to feel it. Whereas the other ones you can't really feel because they've they're um you've scored into them, whereas this one's raised upwards. So with the tab on the right hand side, that's the easiest way for you guys to know, fold all of your score lines down. Okay, so I'm folding them all down. Like so. It's not the end of the world if you get this wrong, but it just means you may get some cracking. Okay? So that's what we've got for the minute. Now, don't do this other score line because we need to do a little bit of cutting, but before we do that, I find it easier to do some of your decoration now while it's nice and flat. So this long piece is going to go on the piece where we haven't got that score line going through the middle, and that's my back. So I'm going to attach that now. So I've already got my tape on the back. I'm using red tape for most of this project because it's nice and strong, and because we're going to be working with acetate, the red tape sticks to that really well. So again, make sure you've got a nice even border. It would be a very, very small white border. Maybe a bit more on the top actually. I think I've cut that a little bit. It doesn't matter, but I've got a little more, a bit more white on the, the shorter side there than the longer one. Let's stick that down. It also really reinforces your box as well, whatever card you're using, because you're adding lots of layers. There's two layers on everything. So if it's more of a, a thinner card, I mean this one's quite thick anyway, but if it is a thinner card things like this when you're layering up they will obviously help then I've got six pieces of this blue card which is what I've matte there behind my washed kind of card that I've got so you'll need six pieces and these are one and seven eighths of an inch by two and one eighth of an inch okay and then basically what you're going to do is with it facing this way with this facing up three of them are going to go in the bottom three squares, like so. Okay, so get those ones stuck down first, then flip it over, and you are going to, let me just double check which one. Yeah, so basically that tab's going to come around and it's going to stick to the back there, so you're going to have this box. We're going to cut down these in a minute, we're actually going to remove that whole square there. So what you need to do is just stick, so it was like that, flip it over, the three top squares that you've got, so here now is our long one, my quarter inch tabs on the left, I've got that longer tab there, three on the bottom, three on the top, three on the top, ignore the middle one, we're going to cut that one away. These two here are where you want to stick your other two blue pieces, like so. So I'll just stick them down and then I'll flip it over again so you can see exactly how that all looks. Okay, so there's that one three on the bottom, flip it over, you've then got two there. Now you also do need a sixth one because I've got one on this top half of the long one on the inside so you need to cut another one that size as well, apologies. Okay so um, then the next piece is going to be I would say stick these layers down but I haven't done them yet so when I show you that bit but you want to stick that now it just makes it easy it's not the end of the world you can see that it's still quite easy to stick that down if you need to. Okay, so now we've got these pieces here. Oh, actually we need to cut. So let's cut into our box and get that more looking like it should. Okay, so I have it like that with that piece that I've just stuck down. So this is that long piece on my left hand side. I'm just gonna flip it around because it's easier for you to see what you're doing here. And basically you wanna cut down the score line that is right next to this one. Okay. Then you're gonna cut down the next score line And the next one, you see each time I'm just cutting down to that middle score line. And then that tab, 
You want to cut right down. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a little wedge out and do one on the bottom there. So you've just got that little tab. So now you should have these three like so. And then what I would say is just go over those edges where the score line is, like I always say, and just tidy it up. I'm just removing the score line there. Okay. Again, you can cut this even before you stick your mats down as well. Just obviously, once you see me do it, you can do it whatever way you want. So now with this facing this way, all these need to fold. Yeah, I'm doing it the right way. Yeah, fold back. So they're going to fold outwards now, like so. And that middle one, we are going to completely remove now. So the one that you've not stuck anything on, you fold them over. Just take that whole thing out really neatly. So that is going to be the front of your box. So now with that tab, when it comes around, you will see our little pop-up box coming together. So you can see now how they resemble just this one straight. That one's got the detailed sides. So now we need to bring it open, bring it open, open it up. And where the tab is, put a cross just lightly on the first square. Miss the one where we've cut that piece out and another one. The two with the crosses is where we now need to stick these, okay? So I'm going to use my... Now there's two ways to do this. You can stick them in when it's all put together and in its 3D form, but a lot of people find that quite fiddly. You've got to get your fingers right inside the box. This is quite a small box. So another way to do it is by doing it like this and sticking one side down first and then doing the other side when it is together. So with your tabs, fold them in like this. Okay, so there they are out, fold them in and just run. I'm just running my little quarter inch red tape on all the little tabs there, okay? So start off with the first one. Now again, it's like I said, it's up to you whether you want to have three, you could have two, you could just have one in the middle if you want to. It's entirely up to you. I'm just gonna take these really fiddly static little pieces off there, which are everywhere. Right, so first of all, you've got to remember that this is the front. So when these get stuck in, you want them, you want the tabs facing away from you. So when I flip it back around again now, okay, the tabs you want to face you, okay? So have them facing up like they are now. There they, you can see them there, they're facing me, okay? I would stick the first one, there's the score line, you've got that square there, in the middle and just come down about, I don't know, one eighth of an inch. Keeping it nice and straight and stick it down. Then get your next one. I'll just take off one side for the minute. And this one, I'm going to then stick in the middle of where the score line is here to this one that I've just stuck down. So I'm going to stick it about there. Okay. Again, try and keep it as straight as you can. Don't worry if it's a little bit out. I'm going to stick that bit back on top. And then the last one, I'm then going to stick in the middle of the tab score line and the one that I'd stuck down there, like so. Okay, so that's about right. So now, when that comes around, that side will now just stick on there, okay? Now you can do it with it open, which I guess we'll do now. So take your first tab off, the front one, okay? But I'm just going to rub out my crosses because you will see them inside. Just get that one out of the way there as well. There we go. Okay, so bring it around. You've got the tab here. Bring that first one around and start to bring the box into its right angle, like square. And you can see it's already, it's just tacked itself on there. And that was, I'm pretty happy with that. Can you see now? That's nice and straight. So just, it will kind of almost go into its straight form. So if you let it do that, then you're kind of getting the work done for you. So again there, just going to squeeze them together slightly just so it's tacking on a little bit. Again, don't worry if it's a little bit crooked, it's really not going to make any difference. All this is doing is it's giving your acetate strip somewhere to stick. And then that one, like so. Okay. So now we've got our three little tabs inside and then this last one so you can just fold the whole thing flat and you're just going to run 
some tape along with that tab take off your backing and just fold that one over and it will perfectly meet up if it doesn't there's a little bit out there and just fold it down like so and just go and burnish really flatten it down there and bring it up again can you see now but at the moment these are facing up like that which is no good so bring them down pop it down flat and just burnish them once we've added more mats onto them they will drop down a bit more there we go all right so that is again if i pop it up to that one there apart from the blue mat that should be on the back there as well because you would cut six but can you see now how almost perfect a size those are so next we need to you need to start now making like your scene but what i'm going to do first of all with you is do the watercolor i always find that when i watercolor my images i want something that's going to match perfectly so i tend to always make my own backgrounds which is what i've done here and I, you know you can it's the same blues that are in the whale there so everything ties in nicely so i've just got some watercolor paper here and i've got some water and i've got a selection of blues here and i'm basically <laughs> just going to scribble over my paper. Now I'm going to completely saturate this in a minute and I'm going to move the water around a more dark over there I think move the water around to create oh dear um, a kind of sea like image or background should I say pattern, that's the word I'm looking for so a bit more lighter down here, a few little white areas, like so. Then I've just got my thick brush here and I'm literally going to just brush it all on. Loads and loads of water on this because I want it to really move and then just start lifting all the pencil Now this will dry much lighter as well than it is and then I'm just going to grab my heat gun and just start drying it and you can see the water moving and then with these bits here I'll just bring this move my paper there we go start to let it drip like that and that's where you get that kind of more natural water background Okay, so there is now my background. So after moving it all around, also any um, blue that dripped off on my mat, I just turned my paper over, splodged it on there, and it just gave it even more pattern and stuff. So yeah, that's all I need. That's the size I need. So now I'm just going to use the embossing folder that come with the kit, and this is the bubbles, and I used this one last week. So I'm just going to run that through my machine. I showed you me doing that last week, so I don't need to do it again, but I'm just going to run it through just over two parts of this but I'll trim it down a little bit so just I can get more into my um, folder there and just get that all embossed. Okay, so that's those two now done. So they are going to be cut down now and they're gonna mat on top of my blue ones here. So, okay, so you need it to be one and one and three quarters by one and seven eighths. And you're going to need one for the back, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pieces of that size and that will mat on top. So I'm just going to go and do all of those now. So there is the box all ready to now be decorated. So I'm going to bring in everything that I've already prepared. There's all my succulent little kind of seabed plants there. And then there's my anchor, which I've already put a little eyelet through. And then I've done all my creatures. I've painted them. Um, painted I've colored them just like I did last week and in the tutorial before that because I just really love these colors with them so you can see them all there and then I've got my little sentiment and just wanted to show you this little thing that you can do if you don't have any dyes like this or something that you want to look like a flower bed just cut like little bits of grass so just cut a strip of green or whatever it is and then just cut tiny 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 little slithers and then just cut into them creating different heights 
and kind of roll them with your bone folder one way and the other way and you can see that and then if I was to stick that along the bottom and you kind of then you know nestle in your little sea creatures and stuff amongst it you'll get just as nice effect okay so just a, a quick way to do it there if you don't have these kind of dies so I'll do that one later so now you need your acetate now I'm just going to cut mine I've just got this I tend to use quite thick acetate and this is from the packaging that I get my stamps and dies I just keep that so and this is from the back of my stamps the A4 stamps that I get in magazines I just use that as well so I would say what you want to do is cut a strip or cut as many strips as you think you need that are half an inch I'm just eyeballing this I've got a half inch strip there and then that's by four and a half so a half by four and a half but you're not going to need it that high because basically there you're going to stick red tape onto this and then stick it onto these bits inside so they all need to be different heights so I'm going to start from the back so you start with your height the when you're doing these you I mean my my pun will be right at the very back my little sentiment there but the whale He's the tallest, okay, and he is just coming up to the top of the back of the box there. So again, I'm going to have him about there. So I'm going to pop some, I'm going to use my thicker tape there. I'm going to pop it on the very top, about three quarters of an inch down there. You need to make sure that you've, you've got enough to cover the back of whatever your image is that you want to stick, okay. So now I'm going to pop that in the back of him. And you can see now he stands up nicely. Then when I pop him, he's going to be sticking to the back of this last one here. So I'm going to put my red tape on the front of my acetate strip. So I'm going to pop him in. Now already it's too long, so I'm just going to snip a little bit off there. And then I can see now I want him to just be like that, just coming up to the top of the box. And I'm putting my finger and thumb just where I need, I know I need to put some sticky tape, just where my finger's moving there. So I'm going to bring that out and I know I've got to put some red tape around there. So I'm just going to stick it like so. And then just cut it so you've got about half an inch. You don't want to cut it too, you don't want to cut it longer than the width of what we've cut these tabs and they were three quarters of an inch wide. So I've covered the tape there on the back, half of an inch up and then I'm going to bring him in, pop him on a slight angle because I want him to look like he's diving into the sea so my acetate is going off to the side which is fine and just stick him down so now you can see he moves about freely and he's stuck behind that back one there okay so now the next one is the octopus so and sometimes you can use the acetate that you may have cut off which I can't see now so I'm just going to cut in another piece so again about half an inch and this is four and a half inches wide some of them you'll want to do thinner because you, when you get to these tiny little ones although they're still fit across the half inch but you may have to cut your acetate so it's easy to just cut it to what you think you need rather than me tell you um, you know it, it may not work then work so Again, I've got quite a large area on the back of the octopus there, so we can cover, I don't want the acetate showing, but it just fits behind the lower half of his body there. And again, now he's going to stick on the second one behind it, but on this second one. So again, I can already see that I've got way too much acetate, so if I come in now, and he's going to be just coming up, so he's kind of just coming up to the where his little fin is there on his tail. So again, I've got my finger and thumb kind of holding it in place, and I know I need to put my glue my adhesive this is why the red tape's good wet glue it will just peel off or a strong um, score, score tape will work again peel that off and again he's on a slight angle and what you want to make sure you do is that you've got no stickiness of that tape coming over the top here or coming underneath because all it's going to do is when you have it folded flat it's going to stick together all right so just rub your finger and your thumb in there and make sure nothing's sticky and then you just want to keep building your scene. So I'm going to carry on and do that, and then I'll come back and talk you through how I put that together. Um, and I think we're pretty much done. Okay, so I've already gone and done the front there. Everything's been stuck with these little foam squares just to give it dimension. Um, I've stuck there all the flowers, the flowers, all the plants down first, and then I've put the crab, the starfish, and then the little treasure chest there is kind of tucked in 
under that one in front of that one just to look like it's kind of nestled amongst it and now I'm just starting to put the little green ones other ones behind these bits so you can use your um, wet glue here if you're sticking it directly onto the cardstock like this one is at the back here so see it's just going over to the left hand side but if some of it goes over the acetate then I suggest you just use a little bit of red tape at the bottom there and peel that off and then you can just stick it again on the back there it's a bit fiddly you've got to get your finger and thumb in there but you can see now where it's kind of stuck just under that puff of fish but it's stuck on the acetate there so I'm just going to fill up the rest of these okay and then the last one there is just the anchor I've just popped the foam there and I'm just going to have it kind of overhanging a little bit like so and just trim off the tops there so there is the card and then there's the back for you to write your message and then the whole thing folds completely flat to pop in your envelope or you can fold up like so and pop it in that way it's entirely up to you I suggest that way just then it means that they stay down so that when that person opens it straight away they are obviously dangling down like that but I just adore them I think they're so cute um, lots of work lots of time get everything prepared but really really fun and um, I hope I've inspired you. So that's this week's um, hobby based kit tutorial. By the time this tutorial goes out, the 21st of the month would have passed and you have until the 21st of every month to subscribe for the next month. So you've now got until the 21st of September to subscribe, dare I say, for October's kit. <laughs> the year is going to be out soon so there you go guys i hope you've enjoyed it everything will be shared in the description box below and over on my blog and i'll be back again soon thanks for watching bye